The story is narrated by a police officer who is Muslim in a Muslim country. And he said that seeing crashes and accidents was normal. But he said this one incident was different. He said, my partner and I were on the side of the road of a highway and we began speaking. And in one second, the scene changed and erupted with a loud sound. We threw our heads back to see what had happened. There was a head-on collision. One car had drifted into the other lane of the oncoming traffic. He said the scene was hard to imagine. Two young men sprawled in the first car, both in critical condition. We carried them gently away from the car and rested them on the ground. Quickly we went back to assist the owner of the second car, but he was dead. Back we went to the two young men lying side by side on the pavement. He said, my partner began reciting the Shahada, asking them to say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. He said their tongues wouldn't accept it. They started humming and singing lyrics to a song. He said, I was terrified. My partner had experience, however, this is the first, my partner had experience, he said, in situations like this, where he had, in, had, had acted and asked others to recite the Shahada as he thought they were close to death. But he said, I stood watching. No movement. Their eyes had locked. Never in my life had I seen anything like this. In fact, I've never even seen anyone die, he said. My partner continued to instruct them to say the Shahada, but it was of no use. The hum of their song came to a slow silence. The first one stopped, and then another one stopped. There was not a movement. They had both passed. He said, we carried them to our patrol car. My partner made no effort to speak, not a whisper between us. We brought the two of them to the nearest hospital. And he ends the story there. The police officer that we started off the khutbah with, with this story, he says that after observing that, I fell back into my routine. And he said he started to drift from Allah. But another event happened and he said that this was the thing that sealed my return to Allah. He said, what an odd world this is. After about six months, a strange accident took place. A young man was traveling on the highway. He had a flat tire. He pulled his car over to the road. And as he was taking the tire out and he was changing the tire, he was struck by a car. He said that he rushed to the scene now with a different partner. He said together we carried this young man into our patrol car and we phoned the nearest hospital letting them know that we were coming in. He said he was a young man, he described him in his youthful years. He said you could tell he was religious. Looking at his face, he said his face was full of noor. He was mumbling when we carried him. But in our rush, we had not paid attention to what he was saying. However, when we placed him on his back in the patrol car, we could now understand what he was saying. Through all of the pain that he was enduring, the young man was reciting Qur'an. It says, he says, he was immersed in the recitation. Subhanallah, you would never have said that this person was enduring any pain. He said blood had soaked his clothes and his bones were broken. 
To tell the truth, he said it looks like he was staring death into the eyes. He continued to read in this tender voice, reciting with proper tajweed, he said. In my entire life, I had never heard any recitation like it. I said to myself, I'm going to instruct him to say the shahada, just like I saw my friend doing before. My partner and I listened, and in that soft voice, I felt a shiver. It shocked my back and my arms and my hair stood up on my body, he said. Suddenly the hymn ceased. It stopped. I watched silently as his hand rose and he raised his index finger pointing upwards to the heavens saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And then he passed. He said, I jumped in the back seat. I felt his hand, his heart, his breathing. He was dead. I couldn't stop staring at him. A tear fell, but I hid it for I felt ashamed. I turned to my partner and told him that the boy's life had passed. He burst out crying. Seeing a man cry like that, I could not control myself and I began to weep as well. Both of us full of tears. We arrived at the hospital and as we rushed through the corridors, we told the doctors and the nurses what had happened. So many people were affected by what we said. Some stood there speechless and full of tears. No one wanted to lose sight of this young man wanting to know the place of where he would be buried. One of the hospital staff phoned his home. His brother picked up and he was told of the accident. His brother began to share a story about him. He said he used to go out every Monday to visit his only grandmother outside of the town. Whenever he visited her, he made sure to spend time with the children who were poor and, in the, or, and the orphans. The town knew him. He was the one that would bring them Islamic literature and lectures. He said his dusty Mazda would be filled with rice and sugar for the people. All of this for families who were in need. He would never stand for anyone discouraging him for the long journey that would take him to get to this town. And he would always politely reply to those people that the longer the drive, the more time I have to review Quran. And I can listen to lectures as well too. He said, and with every step that he made and every turning of the wheel of his tire, he was hopeful in a reward from Allah. This is what his brother is saying about him. When I heard again, I didn't want to tell you the second part of the story, but you see how Allah juxtaposes these realities. What is the life of this young man in preparation of that husn al-Khatima and what does Allah bless him with? And what is the preparation of the others when asked to write the shahad, to read the shahada on the end of their life that only music, songs can be sung? 